Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we are going to review the 40 cards where in reality we have also a sideboard with seven cards that we also use it. The 40 cards that we um, used in the PTQ or CQ classic qualifier in Copenhagen that uh, was granting a spot to Bulgaria, to Sofia uh, Regional Pro Tour and uh, was granting that uh, spot for the whole top eight. And uh, spoiler, we managed to get into the top eight and uh, today we are just going to go through the list or through the deck, uh, what we will up and we are going to comment some details on some of the cards and why they were important during the weekend and also how we use those uh, cyborg cards that we have uh, here uh, in order to get to the top eight. So let's start for the beginning. <laughs> uh, we have the converted mana cost one uh, in the form of uh, witness protection. As you can see, some, some of the cards I, I don't have them in Arena and the reason why is that I have not played uh, limited of this format uh, more than one sealed when they released and uh, when I go to the local shop they sometimes give me codes for boosters so I open boosters and I, I got some of the cards but I'm really not familiar to uh, this uh, format so this event uh, had kind of the feeling of a pre-release although of course I, I knew some of the best cards uh, because they are used in, in constructed formats, formats nowadays and some of the others because I just read them uh, when I open a booster, uh, price booster or things like that but I was not really deep into uh, the format and, and it added an additional layer of complexity uh, to every single round. So coming back to, to the deck, uh, I think I had a really easy pool uh, to build because it was so marked that Esper uh, was the the combination of colors that I have to be to. I think this is called uh, this is Plains Island. Yeah, this is called Obscura. The this combination in in this collection in New Capina. And I think it was so marked that this was the, the way to go. Uh, I have also some good red cards. I was thinking to do splash because I have a lot of removals in, in red, but I think it was not really needed. So I, I tried to stay to this combination of, of colors. So starting with uh, this, with witness protection, this card was uh, really shining during the weekend, um, especially in the latest rounds. At the beginning of the tournament it felt really weak. I I play against a lot of decks with um, tokens and also decks with uh, vanilla creatures and this card was just transforming them into a 1-1 one -one. so it was not that relevant that they lose the abilities but the more I was advancing in the championships the more I was finding other decks that were really needing this type of answer uh, for example, one of the cards I enchanted is this uh, multicolor card that uh, creates dock uh, tokens, like a 3-1 with Vigilance or a 2-1 with, with Haste. That card was really important to, to get it uh, um, blocked or, or completely useless. And another card that was also very important to uh, silence was uh, uh, Ledger Strader that was in the, in the Win and In. Uh, I think uh, the opponent had a very quick deck with a lot of uh, turns where they could really do uh, two two drops in one in one turn, so play two cards, and the Ledger Strider then would let them filter all the lands and um, really continue the flow of uh, small creatures. And uh, stopping that card was super important for getting into the top. Um, what we were doing at the beginning of the tournament in the in the first rounds, when I realized like against vanilla creatures that was not that good, I was using a combat trick uh, that was good to try to make some block tricks or if they will do a double blocking, this card was good and gaining me some lives because the first rounds the decks were really aggro. 
And uh, also this card, I was uh, using it in some of the rounds instead of the witness protection, just to bounce some of my of my creatures and, and create some additional uh, value. And also I was using kill shot uh, in the first rounds instead of the witness. Uh, I preferred to have a, an instant response to an attacking creature. So that was basically basically it for the converted mana cost one. Then in the converted mana cost two, I think this creature was quite interesting. Um, it didn't really become a 3-3 three, three many times with uh, lifelink, but when it did, it was very relevant. But uh, it had a very nice uh, synergy with a card that really impressed me a lot, that was Dig Up the Body. I've never played this card before, and in this format was extremely good, because not only was making this card better, but also was making this card absolutely amazing. And at the end of the day, I could uh, take back some of the bombs we will see later. I have two very clear bombs in this deck. This is one of them, the Shakedown Heavy. Some of the opponents were telling me this is not a bomb, but since I read it, I think it was. And uh, I mean, people telling me that this was medium, I don't know. Uh, why but for me it was it was amazing and the other card uh, it's this one that I think it's a uh, it's really one of the best cards probably of the set for what I could see in the in the tournament I didn't know this card before going there but as soon as I took it out of the booster and I look at it and I say okay a 5-5 five, five flying it's already qualifying for a solid card in a sealed pool but additionally it puts two sealed counters on it which makes Sanctuary more than almost unkillable. I think only cards like By Your Silence, that by the way, we use it several times <laughs> to kill some of the Wardens of our opponents, well, to exile them. Uh, that was one of the very few answers uh, you have in the format to, to this type of cards. And then, uh, until here, everything fine. But then when I read this ability that uh, we have below, uh, I just got nuts. Whenever Sanctuary Warden enters in the battlefield or attacks, you might remove a counter from a creature. It's not even from itself or a Planeswalker. I didn't have Planeswalkers, but this is crazy. If you do, you draw a card and you create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. So, this is really absurd. Um, I have so many creatures that can create counters, well not so many but enough to use it with others but it always guarantees that at least twice if I want I can remove counters from the angel itself. So this was really mind-blowing. This card is absolutely crazy. What was the problem? <laughs> I didn't draw it. I think almost none of the games. I had it only four times, but the four times I have it, it was really a crucial card to get this uh, top eight qualification. Well, let's go back to the converted mana cost two. So this card was, was relatively good. I'm, I'm very happy with it. But this one, oh boy, this one was a MVP in this deck. This card, I just read it when I took it out of the of the of the first or second booster when we were opening so into revealing to the opponent to write down the deck and I was like okay this is going to be really good if I have the opportunity to play this card I will do it. I, I love flash creatures and this one especially that can go bigger and we have several ways to make bigger this card in this deck. It's simply amazing. So by the way cards that we can use to make it bigger are the informant with the con knife. We have the angel to make it bigger. We have the snoop to make it bigger. We have rooftop nonsense to make it bigger, and we have the shakedown heavy. Uh, this this was really amazing. Uh, playing this card with the untap trigger on the stack. We will talk about it later, but that was also amazing. And uh, we have uh, case the joint this card. It's almost a combat trick when you have the 
Fairy Vandal. So that was really impressive. And well, we have the Sanctuary Warden itself that draws cards and can make the Fairy Vandal very big and even a, a very good finisher. So then we have the Broker's Veteran. This card, I decided to put it in basically because of the Angel. I think putting an additional counter if you need it or having another creature that will have this counter, it's really good. I'm not very convinced if this card will shine in other decks. I don't know the format enough to say it, but in here it was a very crucial part of the plan. And then Raffine's in format, I think this card is extraordinarily good for a common. It's a 2 1 for 2, which is quite good in, in sealed. And when it enters in the battlefield, it will make Luthien, well, this cone knife. And if you discard a spell, that sometimes I wanted to do it because of the snooping and because of the syndicate. If you discard a card, then you put a plus one plus one counter on it. And if not, this is still a, a two one and you have filter one land. That's that's really awesome, uh, in my opinion, in some kind of decks like this, where if you get it in turn two, you can be aggressive or make a, a block with it. And if you get it later, you still filter a card when you have your handful of lands in the late game and you can play this card and really and draw this card. This, this is an excellent two drop. I, I absolutely love it. And here is a card that really punished me in the first rounds because I didn't know the format very well. That is this uh, hole for rain zone. With this card, I enchanted many times creatures that have ability lines that can enable other creatures to to do the ability of the enchanted creature. Uh, for example, there is this 2-3 red creature with uh, Minas that it says when a creature makes command, combat damage to you, create a treasure and then sacrifice a treasure, you can play a card from the top of your library. That card I enchanted in the second round with this enchantment and that was a very big mistake. I was not reading the card properly and then every time he was hitting me with other creatures he was getting uh, treasure tokens and treasure tokens and then seeing the upper card of the library and playing it and I really regretted that I put the enchantment there. So I improved uh, my abilities to play this spell and I think this plays really on the opposite than the witness. The witness you want to put it in a creature with a lot of lines of text and the hole from ransom you want to put it in a big guy and um, with as few abilities as possible or, or, or lines of abilities. So I ended up also changing this card post cyber many times by this to get more evasion uh, when I was playing with uh, go white decks with a lot of tokens and plus one plus one counters I, this card was really good because it, it fixed mana it accelerate and it give you evasion so I I was really happy to have it against uh, Naya decks or decks that were more kind of band style of decks uh, sorry I don't know the uh, guilds or the family names uh, from this collection uh, so I cannot call the those decks properly. And then we have also these kind of tricks like fake, fake your own death that usually I I think is at least a, a removal because you can make some aggressive blocks, get back your creature, so you are making a one for one. So it can act as a pseudo removal. And kill shot was the other card I was usually changing for hole for ransom. This card was very good up to the middle of the tournament. So when we were playing with, against fast decks, but when we moved to play against value decks, uh, this card was becoming worse and worse and I was sideboarding it in less than at the beginning of the tournament. Okay, so that's the converted mana cost two. Um, that's all I can say. And then we go with the converted mana cost three. Here we have a mind-blowing card. Uh, this card is so good. I have never seen it before 
And when I read it, I was like, oh man, if I play against uh, any kind of token deck, this is going to be very good. But it goes really beyond that. It makes blocking impossible. If they have seen this card in game one, one they will be so careful at combat all the time. And the ability of Blitz, I didn't realize how good it is. It's really amazing. And more in this kind of uh, grindy decks, you just make a crazy attack, you enable the ability and you draw a card. Unbelievable. And if you have in the late game cards like this, Rooftop Nuisance, or you have cards like this, this card was a powerhouse. I, I'm absolutely in love with this card. Then we have Murder. This is a classic uh, for people like me that we have been playing uh, Limited since forever. I think this this kind of card it's absolutely a top card you want in your deck. One of the best removals uh, ever for Limited formats. I was very happy to have one copy. It allows you to kill almost anything in this format. Step the Angel and some other creatures like that. And then we come here to one of the keys for, for our victory. Uh, this 6-4, it's true that the opponent decides when they get damage and when they draw a card. But come on, in a deck with so many removals and way to, ways to interact, at the end this card it's going to stay alone in the battlefield or if they do a double block, it's so dangerous for them because they can lose one of the creatures and if they allow you to draw, you will draw more removals. You will keep on guaranteeing that this card stays there. So I think this deck was really the home for this card. And uh, I think this was a really amazing card. It gave me so many games against also the token decks because it was so difficult for them to block this uh, card effectively. And they were getting damage at the beginning, thinking, okay, maybe later when I have uh, broader bo board and I have a lot of creatures with plus one plus one counters it will be easier for me to deal with this card but that point never never came because I the more I was uh, advancing in the game then they switched to letting me draw and that was uh, GG's so really really good card in my opinion opponents were disagreeing they were saying that this card is medium I don't know maybe in some other decks but here was absolutely mind-blowing uh dig up the body this card was my favorite i will say from the whole deck uh, it gave me so much value in the late game uh, you could uh, use the casualty in creatures like this or like this or like the psionic snoop and even the angel we will go later there or the night clover and you were getting the night clover again because with the Casualty ability, the creature you sacrifice is already in the grave when resolves the second uh, spell. And yeah, it was almost like a tutor for me and, and it was creating so much advantage. And well, we have this one. This one also was really good. I cast it many times without the Casualty um, just because I, I needed one additional card. Uh, or I wanted to make this bigger and get some more damage and some tempo. I think this is an excellent tempo card. I love cards that make creatures tap for one turn or more, but this one draws a card. And if you use the casualty with the same creatures that you will use the dig up the body, you will get two cards and two creatures tap for two terms. I mean, this was enabling me to make so many um, lethal attacks or to gain time until I get more removals or I draw more cards when I was under pressure. Amazing card. Now we come to maybe the, the weakest card on the game, but I think this card was playing very similar to Killshot. It was extraordinarily good in the first rounds, where it allowed me to stop very aggressive decks and really put there a card that they can basically not pass and 
killing some some tokens sometimes when it's a, a one four. So this card was very good and allowed me to survive these uh, early rounds. And later when I moved to the higher tables where people was having like three to five bombs per deck, this card felt ridiculously bad to the point that maybe a, a basic land would have been better than this. Uh, some friends later suggested that this could have been a better solution. Or even I was thinking that maybe the, the kill shot could be in this spot in the main deck. But um, I don't regret this decision. Um, it was at least drawing many cards sometimes to make the Fairy Vandal bigger and it was holding uh, and, and helping to gain some time until I can prepare my game plan. And then we come to other card that was extraordinarily good uh, flying 2 1 4 3, it's always okay, not super good, but okay. But when it comes into the battlefield, it draws a card. Wow, I love that! And it gains one life that was super relevant in many games. I reach one or two lives in so many games, and then I have to hold this card. Was really doing so much work. I think this is cube material uh, if you have a pauper cube think very seriously to to include this card it's really amazing then we move to the converted mana cost four uh, we have kisa this card is almost like a rare for me or at least in this uh, deck it felt like that i kill some opponents with it especially in high tables where the gains were getting very grindy and very long uh, in the win and in the last game, it was a lethal uh, with this uh, card. Uh, they were at uh, three lives, and uh, we had the Sparas headquarter cycling three in the hand, and we drew this so we could do three damage and and go to the top four. So this card, it's simply a bomb in my opinion it's it's like a rare i i'm very pleased to have this card in in this deck without it i don't think i would have reached the the final it was more important in this championship than than the angel i will say and uh maybe one one or two steps uh below the the shakedown heavy and the night clover but really good card then we move to the Syndicate Infiltrator. Um, there was some games where this card was medium, but some games where it was very good. I had, I think it was in round six or seven, the opponent play um, Elspeth. Uh, I've never seen the, that Elspeth before. And when I read it, I felt like, okay, I lose here. This, this card is unbeatable. And he started to give flying to his creatures to to try to keep the Elspeth alive. But this guy was a 5-5 uh, and uh, was attacking every turn. So he needs to champ block if he wants to keep the, the Elspeth alive. And he ended up losing the Elspeth because uh, a 5-5 five -five flying on the sky, if you don't find removal, it doesn't matter. You have an Elspeth putting plus one, plus one counters in your creatures. Um, and give him flying or first strike, lifelink, he, he will make it at the end of the day. So a very good card. And the more I advance in the championship, this um, card was also improving. I think I was finding more decks with white. I think white was very strong in this championship, and especially multicolor cards, very good multicolor cards that were white. And this card, you can play it for one, black mana giving minus four minus four uh, you can kill creatures that have uh, the counters on them for the indestructible um, this is uh, a very good card and then in the same line but i think it's uh, in some matchups a little bit better in some matchups a little bit worse we have the deal combat uh, minus three minus three you can also kill uh, creatures with a sealed counter especially i i like to kill this six three reno Rhino with a, a seal counter on it. It's very difficult to deal with, but 
with deal combat you can get to deal better with this type of creature so i love this card and the mill three the mill three many many times i was choosing myself because of the syndicate infiltrator and the snoopy uh, newsy i think that was a good reason to to do that plus if i have in hand the dig up the body um that's another good reason to to mill myself for three then it can act as a pseudo tutor and put good stuff in your hand. And then we come to Echo Inspector. I think this is a very solid card. When I think in my mind a reliable four drop for limited, I, I can see perfectly this card. Um, you will put for four a two three flyer that is quite okay in sealed and it will loot for you and sometimes it will be a 3-4 that is very good stats for a 4 converted mana cost creature so this inspector was doing so much work and was attacking so many times to bluff attacks especially in game 2 when they have seen the night clover I was really attacking with this creature against their other inspectors and sometimes they have two flyers uh, for example, the Inspiring Overseer and another Echo Inspector. So I just attack. They could have double block and kill it, but they are so scared of the Night Clover. So this guy did so much work, sometimes six or nine damages like this, just making bluff attacks uh, during the championship. Really good. Then Case the Joint. I love this type of cards. I like grindy decks. And when I see a card that says draw two, draw three, it doesn't matter the cost for me, I will include them in my sealed decks for sure. And in this case, the look, the two cards of each player's library was really relevant because I was always casting this card very, very late in the game when we have like one or two cards in the hands and where the opponent maybe have one card or two, but sometimes it's lands and they are bluffing. And when I look the top, and I see they have nothing or they have something, then I can plan my uh, way of playing. And sometimes I was making very aggressive attacks thanks to what I see with the case they joined. And uh, this car was also very solid. Then a swooping protector. This car, I opened the booster, I saw it and I thought, Wow, this looks amazing. I can play it with flash. It has the seal counter on it. Mm. During the championship, it felt really medium, or I would say bad. I could only make one surprise block, and I ended up playing it like for four end of uh, the turn. I'm not really impressed. Uh, it's not a bad card but it's not as good as it reads and um, at least for me it didn't shine in the whole uh, championship maybe in some of the long games it helped me to get through two four damages that were important but overall um, I don't think it's an amazing card then we move to the Cetereth Seraph uh, we know that this card fixed mana which is absolutely great in a three color uh, deck but the most relevant ability for me was winning three cards three winning three lives in this type of um, super grindy decks getting three lives is absolutely relevant and uh, there were so many games that i was at four and then i could go to seven and then you are any longer afraid of blitz creatures that could come and you can play a little bit more aggressive or risk more in your attacks instead of keeping this, the whole team at home. So this card was very good. And I would say it's probably in my top five of relevant cards of the, of the weekend. So let's say probably this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, this is number four, and this is number five, maybe close to this one, Fairy Vandal. So I think these two are the kind of in the same top position. And then we move to the Sanctuary Warden. This card, it's 
unbelievable we we said it before so i'm not going to stay longer here it's a pity i didn't draw it more um i could not enjoy it as much as i would have liked during the tournament and then last but not least by your silence a very slow removal or interaction uh, interaction that was extraordinarily bad in the first rounds and was very good in the last rounds when i find all the dying uh, bombs in the other side. So I was changing this card quite often in game two or game three for a kill shot, or I could also uh, change it for a revelation of power. That is uh, a nice trick. And uh, just one game that I was playing against a green deck with a very big creatures, I uh, put that card in because I thought it could be very good to block. And also uh, against the bombs, if I feel like I'm on the play, uh, I will play better this card. Because in the, in the late game, I will always have two mana and I can respond to a bomb instead of having to use later uh, by your silence at sorcery speed for five. So that was... Uh, Overall, very good, but as I said, I, I didn't hesitate to to exchange it uh, for other cards in the, in the sideboard. And then we move to the lands uh, that I think they, they should have a special mention. Uh, these two lives that I earned from these two, la two lands were super important. As I said, there was many games where uh, I went down to one or two lives. So super relevant, these uh, two... Uh, fetch lands or well gain life tap fetch lands and then the Sparas quarter uh, this one I, I know from, from constructed I've played this card in MTGO but uh, never in a limited uh, deck and I think it was really good I cycle it only twice most of the time I, I was playing it because uh, this deck was uh, relatively greedy in terms of mana or needed in terms of mana it needed so much mana at the end of the game so i was fine to play it and then sky drive towers uh, that it's a fantastic uh, card because it fix your mana but at the same time you can draw a card and this interaction with this card was relevant in one game to close the game and give uh, lethal damage and also it was playing very good with the uh, quesa so very nice land. Uh, I would have loved to have also the blue black, but uh, yeah, this was this was good enough. And then something I, it's uh, it's very funny and uh, I really like it. Is I was very indecisive um, about the lands. I was really making a lot of calculations in my mind and I was not really sure. And at the end, I decided to do six, four, and three. And now when I was creating this deck here in Arena. The program was suggesting me this uh, proportion of the lands, uh, so that made me extraordinarily proud that I could really put these numbers right. Because it's not easy when you have such a deck to really decide to go high on a on a color or on a land. Uh, usually, you tend to say, "Okay, I'll put five, five, five," but really saying three, four, and six, uh, it's it's really Difficult and especially because of this uh, if I look my my two drops all of them are uh, white or Blue except one that is uh, blue black. So you tend to think okay. I really want uh, White or blue very early, but you have all this fixing and at the end of the day I was not really that dependent on on the early two drops it was more the three drops and the four drops that I really want to play every game. And the fact that this card is also a one drop was very important to really use it as an early removal against uh, white creatures. And at the end of the day, you also have this card that you might use it as a two drop for the fixing. So yeah, this was the, the right combination of, of lands. And well, uh, I also had this card in my sideboard. I never use it, uh, Wuna Safety, 
I don't think it's a good card, but I was thinking, okay, if I find a deck uh, very intensive in removal, maybe I can use it as a kind of combat trick. And um, the rest of the cards, as we commented, we, we use them all. So overall, we did 6-1 uh, in the Swiss with this deck. There was a point of the championship where we were 2-1, and uh, I didn't know the cards of the format very well. I was kind of playing in the dark. And at that moment, I felt like very weak and without any option. So sometimes the mental power is very important that you keep uh, positive. And at that point, I said, okay, uh, let's do this. Let's, let's go to Limited Resources podcast. <laughs> I opened that podcast and I started to listen to the review of the set from Luis Scott Vargas and uh, Marshall and just try to uh, listen all the cards and try to get uh, what they do and try to refresh the cards I have seen during the tournament and this was like uh, medicine this was so therapeutic it uh, empowered me it made me believe again in me in my deck and just focus on playing and being very attentive I also played super fast for the parts of the deck I really know well, like for example, when I was searching for uh, lands in the grave, uh, in the grave, in the in the library, or when I decide a, a play, I tap mana very fast and I attack very fast to gain some time for thinking when really the spot is relevant. And I think that was also the secret uh, that allowed me to. Besides having to read many cards and besides having to think very complicated the spots, still having the time to not have any draw during the championship, except the last round where I made an intention, intentional draw. Um, because I thought that being third on the standings, I was locked for the top eight if I make the, that draw. But besides that round, uh, we didn't draw any round and we end up very early in some of them, like with uh, 20 or 30 minutes in the clock, especially in the last rounds when I knew already very well the deck and I knew also more or less the major bombs or the better cards of the format, then the, the games get more fluid. So it's the first time I, I make it to a Pro Tour-like or Pro Tour level uh, tournament. It has been a tough way to hear and this I, I commend that for people that are also following that dream. I've lost many times winning in for the Pro Tour. The most bitter ones were a winning in for a top 8 in a, in a GP. I think it was in one of the last Ravnica sets. Uh, I don't remember right now. I think it was 2000. 18. That was really, really tough when I lost that uh, win and in. And uh, also I remember uh, one uh, PTQ of a Sunday in, a, I think it was in Calades Standard, where I had a very good uh, Rakdos deck and I get to the final and I, I lose against a mono green with the Galta, with the 12th 12, 12, uh, dinosaur that uh, destroyed me. That was very bitter because some bad decisions made me lose that game and uh, it was so close and then well I had also the I remember very clear the mocks when I started to uh, play competitive uh, a little bit more serious back in 2017 I think it was uh, there was a mox uh, showcase it was the uh, limited format of Ixalan I also made it to the uh, top eight in the Magic Online, and and I also lost the. I think it was the semi-final in that in that case, but it was so close, and it felt um, really bad. So finally, we are there, and there were many other uh, tournaments where we also were so close. And at the end, it it doesn't matter. You just keep on trying, and the important thing is the passion for the game, and uh, having a good time on the way, like. I think this this week that I started to do all these videos and I have some time to reflect on on my playing and uh, to talk a little bit more with 
with you guys and with Marcel and myself and listen uh, to me uh, sometimes again, see my my own uh, plays and my own videos and see where I uh, punted and where I did it right. This also gives you confidence and uh, this also make you more self-aware and self-secure. And at the end, it doesn't matter if you uh, win or if you lose, as long as you notice the progress and you notice that you are getting better every day. And uh, at least lately, I'm, I'm noticing that. And uh, it's great to have this result that uh, companies that progress. But I feel also still I have so much gap to keep on improving. And I'm really excited to play the Pro Tour and, and find good players to possibly beat and to partner with. That's the most exciting part. I, I'm really looking forward to participate in a, in a Pro Tour house, uh, see the whole testing process and learn from, from the best players in, in the world. That's, that's a dream come true now. So we stop here the video for today. Uh, thanks for listening. I wanted to do this uh, small report for those that you like uh, limited last, as I do and, and really passionate and even I don't know very well this uh, format and maybe what I said in this video is probably obvious for you if you play a lot this format but I wanted to give you my, my perspective uh, of this pseudo pre-release that went pretty good for me. Take good care and see you in the next video. Bye bye.